Hey guys, it's J5 to the 5, 1 8 here, episode 7, Mamoto Chiba, also known as I like to call it the origin of Tuxedo Mask. Uh, leave me all the events of what happened after the events of Tuxedo Mask, trying to discover who he was. Obviously, obviously after the ball and all that. After he saves her and takes her back to his place. We also go into, it starts out with, um, you know, Usagi waking up in um, Mamoto's, you know, apartment. And they show some banter back and forth. It's very nice. Develop the idea of the past. We go into a little of why she saved him, why he saved her. Uh, the idea of the legendary crystal moon, why he needs it. And we go into a little interesting idea of, my model's memory, why did he become Casino Mask? So, you we were all thinking in this new reboot, okay, how are they going to handle his memory? Is it being as fast and dark as it was in the original? But no, they took their time and they showed a cool little, little series of flashbacks to when he was younger with his folks and, you know, seeing his parents with him, being his kid, and it was kind of the whole Batman dark origins kind of with, the bat, with the lost past. We go to him as a kid, having fun with his parents, as he grew up. He, his parents died on the sixth birthday, and because of that, he had these strange memories of the Moon Princess. Years, he's been carrying this burden, and, you know, it's been really bugging the guy, and you see the sadness in the guy. You feel bad for him, because he had to hold this burden for a long time. He had to keep, you know, living on to become Tuxedo Mask. It's his hidden identity, the only one he knows. So he's trying to figure out, who is he? Is he Momono Chan, or is he another man in disguise? So it goes to the whole personal view. We also learn about Queen Beryl, and that her master is Queen Meta Metalia, an evil shadow queen, or a shadow queen, that wants the, leg the legendary crystal to be revived and control the world. But maybe, also after talking to her, maybe uh, Queen Beryl's thinking of taking over. She discusses to herself that she wants to take over the Earth, because she thinks that she would be a better ruler. And, you know what, that kind of foreshadows maybe... Queen Burrow, I know she's evil, but maybe she might take down Queen Metallia, and I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm thinking along down the road, maybe Queen Burrow, they'll have that epic showdown at the end of the series, and maybe Queen Burrow will kill off, maybe, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, never, I'm just, I'm just guessing, maybe she'll kill off Queen Metallia, and then control it for herself, and then become the villain, okay, then they'll take out Queen Metallia, and then we'll say, okay, now we have our villain, and then they'll have an epic showdown like they did in the old series. It's good to see other ones in here, as you know. You had the other side of Scarlet, Sailor Venus, you know. Sorry, I need to that back. Uh, you have, you know, Sailor Jupiter, Sailor Mercury, Sailor Mars. Um, they find out that Zoizite, one of the highest uh, kings of the Dark Kingdom, sent by uh, Green Burrow, is using um, the Shadow Dark Store, it's the word emphasis on dark, to uh, hypnotize the citizens of Tokyo to go catch Sailor Moon so, we can, so they can find out Oh, she knows the legendary crystal moon, and then they can find out from it there. As well as we have in between the whole madness of it all, not only are people going insane looking for Sailor Moon, they're zombified by a paralyzing disc that's found and it shows footage of Zoizai brainwashing the people into finding Sailor Moon for him so he can bring it to the queen and Yano blah, 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 take over the world. Also, we deal with a little bit of the love trait, you know, Mamoru and Usagi loving each other, and they feel the pain, and they're losing for it. That was very good. They felt a little bit of that emotional drama. Not too much, but it was good enough. Also, as well, is we have the final climax to our showdown here. We have, later on, the discussion with the center of Crystal Moon. They want to, the people want to look for it. It's a madhouse. It, it's a very chaotic place. People breaking in doors, breaking in stores. Doors, stores. They're looking for the center of Crystal Moon. They'll do anything to get it. Um, the others find out about it. Uh, Luna informs Usagi not to be too attached to Tuxedo Mask because he could still possibly be, be, be a criminal. Although by now, we could kind of say, okay, maybe, maybe not. But who knows? Maybe we all know he's not a criminal. Of course he's not. He's a hero. Also, when she becomes Sailor Moon, she's able to use her moon heal escalation on the people so they can be unbrainwashed, be normal again. Which then, we have the fight with Zoizai and her and the other scouts, including Tuxedo Mask. Now, I know what you're all thinking. That sounds like too many people for one battle, right? Actually, no. I think it's interesting. At first, Zoizite's winning, obviously, because he's overpowered. Obviously, after they use their powers, all three other scouts, Jupiter, Mars, and Mercury, they use their signature powers on him, but he's able to revert and knock them all out. All hope seems lost when all of a sudden we see Momoro come back as Tuxedo Mask out of nowhere, decking Zoizite in the face. That was really kind of epic. I like that. It, 
out of nowhere when all hope is lost. Boom! Smash the Zoizite. Hit him on the cheekbones. Hit him out. Knock him out. There to help her, comfort her as usual. He gets knocked down, zapped by one of Zoizite's lasers. He's knocked down. And when all hope seems lost, we see a mysterious tiara. It's knocking out a uh, Zoizite and a and then a finishing of the Chris and Tiara attack from Mysterious Stranger. Yes, that stranger is revealed to be Sailor V, also known as Sailor Venus, the one in the video game. So we kinda get a little shot introduction from that, and things go back to normal, and Zoizai goes back to the Dark Kingdom. His kids his ass is kicked going back to the Dark Kingdom. We finally get to see the origin and the bringing up being bring up being of Sailor Venus, also known as Sailor V, which is the last Sailor King Guardian. It's very good. The animation is very good. I've said it all. I've said it again. And I like the drama that it's building up. This kind of dark drama. Which I think was worked better here than in the original series. It was good to see Queen Metallia. And, you know, she maybe she, I don't know if she was from the original series. Maybe she's a new villain. It was good to see another villain besides Queen Beryl and the Kings. So, that could be another, you know, stacker for, you know, Sailor Moon and the Scouts to deal with a new villain. I did like to see, um, uh, Tassino Mask Origin. It was it was dark, but you know it was good to see that. Oh, this guy has a reason. It's not like oh he's just going after Sailor Moon. No, there's a reason to the methods of the madness. There's a reason why he's he's been doing this vigilante business. And I like that they mentioned this guy has a sad part to him. It is sad hearing what this guy has to go through. I mean, losing his parents at a young age, not being able to know who he is. He must have had a lot of mental trauma. So that brings a lot of more of the dark aspect to it. It was good to see Sailor, Sailor V come in at the last moment. That was pretty cool. Say having her have a cameo. Hope to see all of the scouts now in action in the next episode. Also with the help of Tuxedo Mask. And Sailor V coming in to save the day. It was good to see the scouts kick some ass, literally. Very emote organ orchestric music. I know. To emphasize the love and drama between Usagi and Mamoru, Mamoru Chan. What do I give this episode? 5 out of 5 stars. Still great, as always. There's nothing holding down this series. I think it's getting good. I just can't wait to see episode 8. So as you all, this is my review for episode 7 of uh, Mamoru Chiba. Please see no mask for Sailor Moon Crystal. This is Dave Rob signing off. See you later. Bye-bye.